green flag is out. Here they come. Jump to start, and they want you to give the spot to Cadell. What is that? That's crap. I'm gonna rub the back lap right in his face. You can do this, man. You can do this. You gotta make this happen here. He got called at the start before they even got to turn one for, for having a half, a half a truck length lead on the start, so he jumped it. You know, I guess this is people we're dealing with. I, I, my truck don't say track with the Red Bull on the side. Yeah, they said that I jumped the start because I got a good start. Oh, man. Well, so I'll start with the start, though. I got a great jump. Just, I don't know. I don't know why they pissed off me. I didn't say anything. Guess you gotta be sponsored by Trax. I'm not sponsored by Trax, am I? It says Mopar, doesn't it? Maybe you shouldn't have got fired. Red Bud, we put a new engine in. We knew it was going to bring controversy. Welcome to Red Bud, everybody, for the Traxxas Pro Lake Division. Green flag is out. DG Green's up on two wheels. Kill up, see if it goes over. Time for the play hard ball. CJ Green's will restart dead last in the field. That truck looks super fast right now as he's starting to pick them off one by oh, one. Get both of these guys. We gotta go in front. Get on his ass and put him away. Luke Johns and Kiki Kincaid get together, and here comes Breezy inside, forcing the issue. Out accelerating the field. This class is supposed to be a spec class. Spec chassis, spec motors, same horsepower, same power range, but something's just not right. CJ Greaves goes from dead last to second at the checker flag. The rest of the field's gotta wonder what's going on. You know, after seeing CJ go from the back of the pack all the way up, it's, you know, kind of apparent something might be going on. And finally, I think it's K2 stepped up and kind of went after it. I'm like, hey, if, if that's the case, something needs to be done here. And we need to know that this is a legal motor or not. We knew it was going to happen either way. Once Kenny Kincaid found out about it, we knew it was going to be up in smoke. Why would CJ bring a non-approved engine? Why they did that, I'm not sure. Uh, it's clear that that, that engine um, didn't didn't meet the letter of the rule book. The expectation is that you guys bring a lead truck. And not just you, but everybody. You know, right. I mean, the rules are, are there, and we expect you guys to you know, bring a Except that the fact was that you We'll, we'll get a straight. Yeah. I just want you to take it off. No, I, 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 I'm well aware of that. Well, I know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> At every race, there's a, a long line of competitors coming up to an official saying, that guy's cheating. you got to go look at that guy. Yeah, I, I, I did something a little, little sneaky, but we weren't hiding anything. I came there with an engine and exposed it to him to show him that this is a problem they have. They just haven't ran into it yet. And here it is. With engines that are dramatically different, you don't have a spec class. We've got a 35 foot-pound torque difference between the Ram and the Ford. They're built dramatically different. There's no way that they can make them perform the same on the racetrack. I was happy that they had the ambition to go out and buy a Ram engine and put it in their truck. You know, I was rooting for because I'm sick and tired of, you know, nothing but Ram wins and nothing but Jenkins Brothers Racing wins. Gary Stanton was 
contracted to build an engine comparable to the Ford and Chevy, yet Gary Stanton has never dynoed a Ford engine. The Ford guys have never dynoed Gary Stanton's engine. We have never documented that they're anywhere as close. You're the only one right now that's unhappy. Nobody has dynoed them. Nobody has dynoed them. I'm the only one that's man enough to stand up and make myself look like an ass because you guys aren't doing your job. I think human nature tells you you want to try to make everybody happy, but I know I can't. When we brought that engine to Red Bud, we knew that it was gonna it was gonna go nuts and everyone was gonna throw a fit about it. So we're trying to make it even as even as we can get it. So we brought it to prove a point and I think our point was proven. We ran Saturday and after Saturday's race they were like, No, you're DQ'd. What I did was I disqualified him. Um, he was disqualified from from the Saturday race. End of story. Basically threw the book at me because that's all he could do. He's new to the sport and the book says this and that's the decision he had to make. I have a lot of respect for Randy, and, and I talked to him after it, it all happened. And, you know, I, and I explained this to them. I said, you haven't been around this for the last two years where we've been waiting for something to happen in this class to expose all these engines and, and find this equal playing ground. And I found a way to expose it. You know, they've admitted I did save them a lot of headaches that are would have happened. And yeah, I think he should be disqualified because he shouldn't be bringing an out-of-spec motor to any race. We felt as a team that we needed to bring this issue ahead, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't moving. I mean, from the beginning of the year, they made some changes, and it kind of died off. I respect every one of the competitors out here. I respect every one of the teams that's out here. I understand what they're trying to do. You know, we're, we're selling competition. Um, these guys are trying to win. I respect the competitors and the teams for trying to push the rules, and they need to respect me and my officials for enforcing the rules that we have. We know technically that he is illegal but that motor still might be within the, the rules, and we need to know that. What happened was the competitors all got together as a group. They came to me unanimously and said, look, we'd like to allow him to compete. USAC decided that Sunday they were gonna let me race, and if my engine was legal, the DQ would go away. What the class agreed upon in, in the penalty phase of that was they sent a letter and said we will agree to let CJ race the second day and will take his disqualification away from Saturday if you do these things. Go check the motor. Through through a process that we have, we determined that we needed to just go ahead and pull those motors. And then we took them down to um, a test facility where we could uh, look a little deeper. The, hopefully, it's going to help them uh, know what they have to adjust. We want to, to take two engines, put them on a dyno that is the same, in the same condition, same everything, so that we can, you know, look at them and, and see, you know, is, is this engine better than that one? Do we need to maybe look at, at making adjustments to one to, to make it equal to the other one? It sucks to get your motor pulled. Um, you know, our team had to take that motor out in 90 degree temperatures and, you know, lots of humidity and they, you know, after a long weekend, they wanted to go home and they had to pull the motor out. We'd like to be uh, packing up, but... It's sealed, it's legal, they don't think so, so they're pulling engines and I guess we'll see what happens. Mine and Andrew's engines dined out almost identical, so I mean there was nothing going on between either one of us, both of us are legal. After the post-event technical performance inspection of the engine, I imposed a penalty as well as a financial penalty for their actions of running an illegal engine in the race on Saturday. Either way, I probably should have got a points penalty, so three points is fair enough. $3,000 fine, I don't know if that was really called for. You know, he took a pretty big risk. He almost got CJ DQ'd for the whole weekend, and uh, you know, fortunately, the, the engine was built correctly and it dynoed correctly. And you go look who does good and who whines about whose engine the most, and then the engines who are gonna get pulled. Everyone whined about Cadell's, everyone whined about mine. Now they're all whining about levels, and I'm sure soon here his is going to get pulled to Brad Lovell's out here in a Ford motor, and he's a second to a second and a half faster than anybody else. Yeah, I, I mean, I already talked to Brad Lovell. He already said he's got fingers pointing at him like crazy um, after winning one race, and I, I told him, hey, welcome to the club. Come on, you know, it's legal, it's sealed. The, the thing that bugs me is, is it going to be a witch hunt every event. Well, Luke sped up this event, so should we tear apart his motor? And CJ did it, you know, in Red Buds. We should, should we tear apart his motor? Well, hopefully it doesn't become that. I don't know. They didn't do it to us. We don't have any cheap-ass parts in ours. <laughs> Brad's doing good. 
my hat's off to him. If he's the guy that can go out and, and beat the Rams, I'm all for it. Now everyone knows what the dino sheets are, and I mean, it is what it is, and it brought it to where it is now, and a lot more people are happy about it because now everyone knows about it. Everyone knows everything. So, I mean, it had to come to it. Otherwise, it was going to be the same thing all year long, and it was never going to make a change. Uh, I, I think it's good in a matter of... Don't tell them anything. <laughs> everyone, then, it's a, it's a essentially a level playing field. Everyone knows what everybody else has. Um, there was some question as to, you know, what was in that engine. Now it's out in the open. There's no secrets. Well, it's all out, it's all out in the open, but they're not doing anything about it. So, is it a good thing? Who knows? We are looking at ensuring that there is parity among the three uh, engine manufacturers right now. We're not, we're not by any means done. Um, we did this uh, with the with the with one manufacturer, Red Bud. Um, we have a couple of manufacturers to go. Now we got four more builders for every engine. Four people can build the Dodge. Four people can build the Chevy. And four people can build the Ford. We're going to continue to work on it. You're going to see probably some more tweaks between between uh, the three manufacturers to try to ensure that uh, you know the torque curve and the power curve is the same. Whatever. We'll go and race for third again today. That's the best we can do. Yeah, our whole engine thing did what it needed to do. Everyone's happy now, so I think I should get my $3,000 back. You guys should be paying us. It's all good. I mean, uh, we took our lumps and paid our fines, and now it's time to go back at it. biggest thing that we do uh, in looking at track conditions when we have rain and, and the track's wet is we have to make sure our trucks, uh, our trucks, our safety trucks are capable of going out and, and servicing the racetrack. It's so muddy out there though. They don't want to get their trucks dirty, which amazes me, but uh, you know, that's, that's just what, that's where they're at right now. I, ideally, obviously, we don't want this much mud. You can't see sponsors. The trucks get way down. It's not as fast. It's going to gain easily somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 to 500 pounds of mud. And most of that will be on the back. So what it's going to do is it's going to provide extra weight on the back, taking the front tire weight off, making it hard to turn. <laughs> thing that I had heard before I came here was the turn one is 100 miles an hour and it's off camber and you got to be careful. We'll, we'll see what happens on the track. I, I don't know what to expect. You don't keep it wide open. Uh, you don't? No. 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 <laughs> you, find, you find your way you definitely to the spot that you, yeah. can, that you can see. Yeah. Never been here before. Never raced here before. Now I'm sitting on the pole. All right, come on, Matt. Let's go. Going into Cranon on turn one with, I think there were 16 other trucks down, down the line. No pressure, Andrew, so you don't have to torture the truck. Hey, quick, remember, go eat. Let's get it, let's get it. Keep it a little bit loaded. They're coming to the green. I felt like I had pulled CJ like pretty good and then I started to just move over and so that I could make that right hand turn. And I think I came through the turn maybe three or four truck points ahead of everyone else through that turn. You got a little carnage in front of you, just check up a little, you're good. Stay in it. Good job, good job. Stay with it, baby. Good job. You're inside. Nice job, nice job, nice job. Let's go, let's go. Nice job through that corner right there. Nice job. I'm going basically as fast as I think I can go. And in my rear mirror, I catch a glimpse of CJ coming. And I'm breaking at this point, even to make this turn. And he's still going. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking here, like, there's no way he's going to make this turn. And then I realized how he's going to make the turn is he's going to hit me and use me to make the turn, which is what he did. So he pushed me up into the block. I got passed by two cuts right there. And then at that point, it was just shredding tear-offs. So by lap three, all my tear-offs were gone. Then by lap six, I was done. All right, drive the park. Then Oregon's going to be okay.
but even in the front, the visibility was terrible. That my eyes were, the, the water was coming down behind the tear offs, and, and even mud from my own truck. So I kept trying to pull all my tear offs off. I couldn't get them all off, so I had to crack my visor. I went through 30 tear offs in four laps. So, and then I had to flip my shield up, and it started raining, and then it was getting in your face. And once you have no shield, I had towels, and you you block it with your hand as much as you can just to save your tear off so that you know you'll be able to see. Here to go, Brad. Try the spark. You're doing a great job. Keep it under control. Good to go, CJ. Good to go. Hang in there. I actually did make it back up to third and before I lost my last rag, and then after that I couldn't see, and I was lucky to get there. I was driving with my visor up, and then... I'd get roost, I'd put it down a little bit, I'd lift it up, I'd put it down. I mean, I couldn't see anything. I was just trying to survive. This is the white flag lap. White flag, Rav, one to go. You're doing a great job. Drive smart. Still got four truck lanes, so let's not throw this away. Still clear. Clear by a long way. Take it easy. Clear by 12. Nice speed. Bad mother Brad level. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice job, nice job. Unbelievable. Dude, great spotting. Good job, everybody, man. Good weekend. The mud was unbelievable out there. It was unbelievable. I mean, I mean, I love to tell you that it was fantastic driving that got me in front, but it was luck. There were cars spinning everywhere, and a hole opened up, and I shot out there. And then, you know, it was just trying to maintain that lead. You know, just skating that thing on ice and throttle control. But I'll tell you, the tire grip, the chassis was balanced. Everything was working great. It was crazy, to say the least. It started pouring like two laps in probably, and it, it, it just got worse and worse. You know what I mean? And I, I pulled all 30 tear-offs, half, it wasn't even halfway yet, and I pulled all 30 of them. Uh, it feels great to be here. You know, I, this is what I wanted to do at home, is come here and, and be on the podium. You know, I wanted to impress my friends, you know what I mean? And, and, and with this Traxxas PFC Anzo truck, you know, we came out here and did that today. Global got sideways, Mike and Jake go right, and I slid and went right in that ring. Awesome run. Red Bull arch that they put up, right into it. Congratulations to Brad Lowell. Yeah. I think we might have to throw down a little bit. We'll, get, we'll try to get it started early so I can get to bed and get ready for tomorrow. We got a lot of cleanup now. Maybe we can hire people to clean all the mud off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Anybody got a bucket of water? I need a bucket of water. Brandon's so special is, you know, it's the granddaddy of all off-road racing. It's got the most speed. Uh, it's got some of the best views, you know, as far as seeing the trucks do what they do. It's got the most spectators I've ever seen at an off-road race. And it's, it's the real deal. I mean, it's, it's here to stay. This is my favorite track. This is probably my best track. You know, I think I've, I've raced here eight times in my Perlite career, and I've won four races here. I've been coming here for, I think this is my 30th year here. I've uh, been in the pro light class for, it seems like forever. When I come here to the racetrack, it's the only place I know of that, that I still feel like a kid. Well, Crandon's like the Super Bowl of, you know, off-road, so to be here is, is uh, it's an honor, and it's, you know, it's bragging rights, and 
and all that, and it's a culture, you know, here that's uh, not like anywhere else. Mainly, you work on a little bit of suspension changes from Red Bud to here. And other than that, I mean, it's just who's got the biggest balls to hold it wide open to turn one. This track is definitely full throttle a lot of the time. So this is all about horsepower here. And getting getting a good good line out of turns to get real fast on the straightaway. We're going to come out harder than we ever have, and there's no mercy on anyone anymore. And it's, it's game on from here on out because we're here to win the points championship. Welcome everyone to day two of Crandon International Off-Road Raceway. The Traxxas Pro Light Division is at the line. That's right, yesterday's mud bath. Brad Lovell brings in his first win here at the big house. Getting set track conditions completely different. Should be awesome. And on top of that, the controversy continues. From the very first race of 2012, CJ Greaves is the guy with the spoon and just stirring the pot. All these different manufacturers, three, four different car manufacturers, trying to find parity. Where's it going to be had and when is it going to be taken care of? With the changes, should make it an even playing field. Spec class, the driver should shine. It's really going to count here at this land rush start. Even we're talking about a mile and a half for so long track, it's all about the hole shot. Not jumping the green, but being right at the green. Speaking of the green, here it goes. CJ Greaves looks like he got a heck of a jump. Either that was a great jump or he caught everybody else sleeping. But either way, one truck length start will lead into a three truck length lead into turn one. But that being said, it's Randy Elton, the whole shot. He can gain to the inside. Hey, hey, hey. I'll get quick, I'll get 30 years of racing here for El he's up front. And how about CJ Green? Somehow was buried in third and fourth in turn one. Now with the lead. We talked about how important the start was. Take a look at it there. There's no roost coming in CJ's face right now. Way at the edge. Middle of the first. Clean air to the outside through the Oakley timepiece gravel pit turn as Luke Johnson goes around. A complete 360 on the inside of the Oakley timepiece turn. And that will just let CJ pull away from the rest of the pack. Randy Eller still in second, Kincaid third. Here comes Andrew Cadell on the rear bumper of Kincaid. Not even a complete lap is being shown yet, and the damage to the right rear of Andrew Cadell has got that fender just bunched up. Something happened in that gravel pit turn. Where it was all muddy yesterday, you gotta think today's track conditions are just epic out there. Mother Nature is shining us today without a doubt. CJ Grease down that long back section. Andrew Cadell right now getting roosted a little bit. Now watch closely as these cars go into that left-hand hairpin turn. They actually turn right just a little bit to set up to make that left-hand turn. Two-wheel drive at its finest. And this is what's considered a spec class. The tire size has to be the same. Suspensions are the same. Force power limits very similar, as well as the torque range. Everything's got to fit within the specified areas to make this thing a driver's class, make it as equal as possible. The only thing that's different about this class than any others is the fact that the body style does not have to match the manufacturer of the power plant. It's supposed to be an even playing field where the driver should shine. Randy Eller right now is that driver running in second place as we heard earlier. 30 plus years been running here at Crandon. But he's getting a lot of heat from one of the youngest drivers and that is Keegan Kincaid. Keegan Kincaid with reigning champion Andrew Cadell. Zoning in on him, flying that red number one back plate, letting you know he's the reigning champion. Matt Cook, first time ever at this track, never seen Wisconsin before, and he's doing it for the first time on a racetrack. He's running up there in the top ten right now as well. Cadell taking a look to the inside of Eller, holds him off for now. Here comes Cadell to the inside of the Argonne turn. Cadell trying to complete the slide job, doesn't do so. Randy Eller still able to hold him off. Dick, 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 dick. And look at the way Andrew Cadell was saving those tear-offs. He's using his glove right now to try to push the mud off the tear-offs, trying to save them for as long as possible. I think yesterday at this point they're already out. And Cadell finally completes the pass and he uses one of his tear-offs. And here comes Matt Cook to the outside. Cook down the top five. Uh, got one coming to your side. Got one coming to your side. All right, nice job. Clear by one. 
Goodell, three or four truck lengths now over Eller. He says this is his favorite track he's ever raced on. Here comes Rafael Navarro now. His first time ever granted as well in that Boss No Plow Nissan. Why the group running back there? You got one coming on the outside. Clear by one from behind. Clear by one from behind. Keegan Kincaid, a second generation driver, son of Jeff Kincaid. Again, as we mentioned earlier, lives so close to the track, you can probably hear the sound of the racetrack from their backyard. And here comes Matt Cook to the outside. I'm Kincaid. And that's Supercross.com for. Matt right Cook's been looking fast out here all weekend. Nice job, bud. Nice job. Let that truck do its thing. But thing. just outside of the pictures, our leader, CJ Green. We've been talking about everybody else. He's been so far ahead, he's been out of the picture right now. On this, the super speedway type of short course off road racing. Clear by two. Clear by two. No pressure right now. Come on, let's get him right here. Navarro now going inside of KK, trying to take a look. There's a good shot of Grease, about 15, maybe 20 truck lengths out in front of Cadell. Now keep in mind, there will be a competition yellow coming out right around the halfway point of this race. Where we'll bring out the pace truck, slow down the field to bring it back to bumper to bumper for one lap, and then re-throw the green flag. And they call it the competition yellow, and it's for competition's yeah, sake. Regroup and everyone, like you said, there's no runaways. It plays into the mindset of how you're going to do this thing, and the points play into it as well. As we go back to the race action, I don't know who I'm more impressed by right now. Randy Eller hanging out of the spot, running up front, or Matt Cook running in the top four now. His first time ever here at Crandon. Nice job, sir. One. I want to see that every time by. Every time by. Cook could have a problem. Pretty darn quick with that left front of his hood starting to flop up in the breeze. That could become an issue to block his vision. Try not to the truck down right there at all. Still not a real big issue at this point, but we never know. Still a lot of race to go. And each lap that goes by here, you can see that slickness of the track going away just a little bit. And towards the end of the race, it'll probably even dry up a little bit, causing a little more dust. We'll have to see. Getting some of those aerial shots looking down at the track. It almost looks like it's a one-line track right now. Either too far out, too far in, there's still a little bit of standing water. There's only one line that's dead center. That's what everybody right now is racing on. That seems like the best line you've taken so far. Man, look how comfortable Matt Cook looks right now. Just kind of one hand and reaches up real gently, adjusts his helmet, going down that back straightaway. DJ Greaves still has a pretty good lead, but maybe cuts down just a little. Perfectly riding that outside berm through turn one. And that hood is getting a little bit higher all the time for Matt Cook. Yeah, you called it, Scott. Feel it up just a little more. Get high, get high. Go, 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 go. Clear. Here comes Ross Hook to the inside of Sean Morris. And Hook will move up one more spot. John Morris had a tough day yesterday out here in that mud, getting shoved off right under the Red Bull Arch, ending his day before lap number one even finished. Randy Yeller getting a little bit of heat from Keegan Kincaid. And how about Rafael Navarro? Wow. Again, I can't emphasize enough. First time ever in Wisconsin and the first time ever here on the track at Crandon. What a place to go for your first time. Keegan Kincaid playing it really cool right now. Kind of just holding his position. Just for a moment, Randy Eller opened the door, but quickly slammed it shut. It makes you wonder how much communication goes on. But we get a little bit, but we hear it once in a while. But you actually wonder how much communication goes on between the spotter and the driver throughout the entire race. Some people like a lot of communication, others not so much. Man, Eller, Kincaid, Navarro. Track's all yours, man. Run your line, run your line. That hood of Matt Cook continues to peel up ever so slightly. Randy Eller's going back a little bit, but he's still running the top five. I'm so impressed with that guy right now. Still getting it done with all these young guns. When I say young guns, probably what? A third of the field are still teenagers. Pretty amazing when you think about it, including our leader still has a commanding lead out there, C.J. Greaves. 
Kincaid now has gotten around Randy Eller as they head into the Oakley timepiece gravel pit turn. Here comes Novaro. And here comes Josh into this Nissan trying to get into the battle as well. He definitely is. I've been watching him creeping closer and closer each lap. It's amazing how clean Keegan Kincaid is inside that cockpit. And there's the competition now. We're at the halfway point of this race. Richie Kulov will pull off that really cool Mopar Ram Runner pace truck and will collect the field back to bumper to bumper. That big advantage that CJ Greaves had at one point is now gone. Listen up. They're saying you jump the start and they want you to give the spot six down. What is that? That's crap. They're saying to put him up front right now over the Sporters Radio. Put him up front. Roger, you're saying to let him go to the front? They are asking him to go to the front. They are telling us to tell him to go to the front over the Sporters Radio. Go to the front, Andrew. Okay, Andrew, you're the leader, so don't worry about what the Greaves truck is doing. The thing's ticking and popping like crazy under braking, but we'll keep going for it. Well, with C.J. Greaves getting pushed back to the second spot, that kind of answers our question of what took place at the drop of the green flag, Jim. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. I mean, how important that jump is, but it's a fine line between a good start and leave it too early. All right, Matt, just go ahead. Keep it sucked up there. Keep it sucked up there. We're going to go green right now. Tell me no pressure, I try something, the guys are all the hell over me. Oh! Holy swat happened in the back! Something terrible's happened, a chain reaction like I've never seen before, before the green flag's even thrown for the restart. No start, no start, no start. They checked up, then, uh, hints, and then I got rammed. Copy that, Andrew's trying to pull some shenanigans up front here. What is Multiple trucks involved before they even got around turn one to take the green flag. Some hard hits out there, under caution. Huge chain reaction between five, six trucks. I can't see either. Ross, do you want to run around and get that panel pulled off? You're going to have to turn the hood off. I got no brakes. Something tells me Ross is having brake problems. I have no brakes. That's Ross Hook getting help from the USAC officials. You saw Eric Rupel going by in that blue truck. Let's see if we can do this again. The Mopar Rammer pace truck will pull off to the left side of the course. Wait for it. Wait for it. Go, 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 go. Waiting for face as you throw the green flag. There it is. We're back underway with the reassigned leader, Andrew Cadell. CJ Grease pushed back the second. Still right there, Matt Cook third. Clear by one or two, clear by one or two. He's down to your inside a little bit, one car leak straight behind you. You gotta think there's gotta be a chip on the shoulder of CJ Grease right now. As he goes inside, Andrew Cadell through the Oakley timepiece turn. Try that inside line, Cadell will hang out of the spot. Another and crash. More, more contact made, right in the middle of the Oakley turn. Three by one. Cadell goes wide of the bluff a little bit, but carries a good hit of steam. Two to three. Two to three clear right now. Matt Cook, Key Kincaid, Rob Bill Navarro, all the top five. Still by two. Still by two to three. Second, don't give him an inch. You can hear the intensity for K2 spot for Andrew Cadell right now. It's almost like he's behind the wheel, or would want to be right now. It came to the inside of Cook for just a second. Now watch as these trucks all do that slight right-hand turn before they make that left, trying to set up to make it a nice, easy transition through that bank corner. Cadell pulls it off, Grease pulls it off, as well as Cook, Kincaid, and Navarro. Great job of it that time by. That piece still on the front of Matt Cook's truck doesn't seem to be a huge factor right now. Our top two trucks pulled away from Cook. Right now running in third. Our top two trucks equally matched because they're both on those Wolfar power plants. DJ Greaves only a couple truck lengths off of Cadell. This is an exact replay we were watching the first half of the race right before the competition yellow, except the roles were reversed. The other guy on the rear bumper, but couldn't really get around. Not enough there, yeah. 
Enough to get up to him, but not enough to pass. CJ Green's right there. He's tried different lines on nearly every corner. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to change it up. If you're following the guy in front of you, you will, you're going to catch up to him maybe, but you're not going to get around. And the other thing, if you're following a driver in front of you, not only are you running his lines and having no chance to pass, as it looks like CJ Green tries the inside line, but you're also getting bruised from the driver in front of you. Hook spins to the inside. And off goes one of our GoPros. CJ Green again tries a little bit inside line on Canal. Still nothing there. These two trucks are so equal as they head into the Forest County Potawatomi we turn one. Come on, buddy. Let's do it. Let's do it. You can hear Johnny Green, CJ's dad. Coaching his kid out there on the track, trying to find a way around, helping him go around our leader. Square this off and get the run down, like you tell me. CJ trying every way he can to get by the reigning champ, Andrew Cadell. Look how high the lines are in that Oakley timepiece turn. Neither driver gaining advantage. Now into the final turn, right before the Amswell finish line. Two laps, two laps to go. Right there was Kathy Green, CJ's mom. Spotted from a different part of the track. Two laps to go, two laps to go. They've opened up a little bit more of a gap over the third place truck of Keegan Kincaid. With all the drama that's been going on in this class in 2011 and 2012, you gotta wonder, and now that everybody knows that there's two Mopars running up front and this far up front, if the rest of the field is going to be protesting these two trucks after this race. It'll be one to go this time by. That track is really holding together well. Absolutely perfect conditions right now. As you can see how far back in third place Keegan Kincaid is. It would have to be a catastrophic failure of some kind by our top two trucks for Keegan to have a shot with a little over a lap and a half remaining. Speaking of shots, CJ Green still right there within two car lanes. I think right now our top two trucks are defining what this class is all about. Equal performance, equal driver setup, equal driver ability, and that's what this pro light class is all about. Pretty amazing when you think about all the different speed changes, the turns, the terrain, how evenly these two guys are matched right now. And to think they were driving the same way in the first half of the race, the same way, but opposite, yeah, opposite roles. Gonna be one to go this time by. White flag is out, you're clear by two. Now we might start to see CJ Kreese possibly start to overdrive this track in certain areas, just to try to make up ground on Cadell. If he has a shot, how hard will he take it? Into the Argonne turn, one last time. Kreese will go to the inside. Not quite enough, but is that a little bit of smoke we see out of Cadell? Might have been. You talked about that one line, Scott. Even though CJ is trying alternate ways around, I don't know if they can find it. Grease right in the back bumper of Cadell. We also heard at the break that Cadell was having some sort of motor issues under braking. That might be a problem to start to surface a little bit. But still, Cadell's hanging out of that lead. Turn number one. 100 miles an hour. Cadell, two car lengths over CJ Grease. Up around the skybox turn. Down the hill and into the Oakley timepiece gravel pit turn. CJ washes up in the fluff just a little bit, loses a little ground. They both take the same line through the corner. Up over the tracks of Swan Zone. And into the final turn. If it's going to happen, it's going to be right here. He's going to try inside on you. to try the block. You stay on it now. Drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it. CJ throws that truck in the sideways in the corner. Towards that hands up finish line. You just won this race, baby. Good job, good job. Canal will take the win. Second to CJ Green. Yeah, boys, that's that race team I put in yesterday. Thanks for believing in me. Glad we get you guys to win today. What an amazing win for Andrew Cadell. Let's take a look at the final standing. Well, you said it, Jim. Taking that win. Andrew Cadell, second CJ Crees.
Keegan Kincaid finishes third. Rafael Navarro, his first time ever here at Cranon, finishes fourth. And Brad Lovell, still in the points. Chase finishes in top five. Speaking of which, I think that's going to change the points a little bit. Let's look at the season standings. Yeah, it shakes up the points battle in the top three specifically. Cadell has the points lead right now with 137. CJ Crease with 134. Brad Lovell, 133. Luke Johnson is fourth right now with 106. And Keegan Kincaid in the top five with 97. All happened on that restart. Good green. I'm going to rub the back lap race his face. I got to hang out up here, Andrew. Uh, have a good time up there. They let the superstars and pro shoes get away with jumping to start and doing whatever they want. You know, I guess this is the people we're dealing with. I, I, my truck don't say track with the Red Bull on this side. Good job, buddy. Good job. Dude, it's a crazy thing. <laughs> baby child piece of Yeah, they said that I jumped to start because I got a good start. I haven't actually interviewed anybody or talked to anybody about this penalty i heard i heard it so i don't i don't know all the details of it um he got called at the start before they even got to turn one for for having a half a half a truck length lead on the start so he jumped it two official called it he was given that given the option to give the give the position back before the competition yellow or do it during the competition yellow i get out of the truck and and i'm excited for winning that race you know we we had struggled all weekend long and uh yeah you know, i was very excited doing doing an interview and and, you know, CJ calls me a golden job. So I'll start with the start that I got a great jump. What's that about? I don't know. I don't know why they pissed off me. I didn't say anything. Yeah, I was very excited doing doing an interview, and, and you know, CJ calls me a golden job. Oh, man. Well, so I'll start with the start that I got a great jump. What's that about? I don't know. I don't know why they pissed off me. I didn't say anything. This has got to be fucked by traffic. I'm not fucked by traffic, am I? That's Mopar, doesn't it? Maybe he shouldn't have got fired. Well, they said he jumped the start, and we got proof that he didn't, so we're going to protest it. Okay. Mop 2, they said CJ has to give up the spot, and they said make it be you that he has to give the spot up to. And so I drove my butt off to get to second place. I don't know what, why he didn't give up the spot earlier. I don't know. I guess they say I jumped the start, even though I came through turn one in like fourth or fifth and passed them off. Something through the bar jump. But hey, I guess the spot doesn't matter. You know, I had a great race, and... I don't know what, what he's you know, mad at me for, you know, they put me on the second lap, they had to get the spot back and, and wait till it comes to field, so I have no clue, you know, I, I was starting to catch, so I don't know why he's mad at me for, you know, wanting to get pushed back from behind me because I couldn't see where he was. If we say he jumped, if somebody says he jumped the start, the officials aren't, aren't going to do anything if they don't see it. And so, you know, if he wants to be a baby like that, we'll just can't, we'll keep treating him like a baby. I didn't leave any sooner than anyone else. I mean, there's some pictures, I came through turn one in like fifth. If I would have jumped the start, I would have been out front, so... I guess we'll find out here in a minute. No one's going to respect you if you're going to be like that. Yeah, I lost a whole bunch of respect for him. You know, he'll probably say the same thing, yeah, even though I, we didn't do anything to him. Um, but you know, you know, case in point, it started out last year. Gets in somebody else's face and then you know, cries and, and doesn't get anything done to him. Go! Take it! I want to explain. Touch him? It's just, it's stupid for him to come up and do that. As far as, you know, controlling what he says and all his comments sometimes, I mean, yeah, he's got to watch his feet and cues, but uh, that's a real hard thing to control. Is, you know, when five-year-old swears for the first time, you, you're like, where'd they hear that? Well, you know exactly where they heard it. So I'm a little bit of a free spirit that way. I think he's got to learn some of his own lessons. I want him to be natural and, uh, you know, a little bit free, a little bit wild child and see where it goes. If it, if it don't work out, I guess maybe he needs to go work at McDonald's. My relationship with Kenny Kincaid is complicated. He he invited me in his hauler, and I don't know what he was fishing for or, or what he was really trying to do. Kenny Kincaid is the one guy who talks in every single driver's meeting. I'm not allowing Kenny at the driver's meeting. He tells you every driver's meeting. I know. <laughs> that will not be on the TV. <laughs> Use the F word, whatever you want to... Get something cut. Start fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna start a time or go run a little behind you, think? Hey, do, you, do I look like I have a fucking radio in my hand that I can, can find out for me? <laughs> I really appreciate it, Mr. Miller. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs>